welcome to another episode of orchestrating outcomes this time for external manufacturing brought to you by tracelink we hope to uncover some key nuances between a cdmo or a cmo and their customers brand owners as it relates to supply chain digitalization i am thrilled to have uh, uh, with me today arun giddu uh, director of supply chain at thermo fisher i have known arun for almost what 13 years now in fact i reported into him at uh, wwr international a life sciences company focusing on lab supplies uh, distribution with the nature of the business that they had we worked on several supply chain optimization projects and one of the key initiatives that we worked on was uh, electronic integration with our uh, supplier base we had roughly what 10000 purchase orders that we exchange on a daily basis with our with our suppliers so it was near impossible to not have a digital highway connecting our system to to our suppliers and and have smooth operations so i'm pleased to reconnect with uh, with arun in different role now and and see if we can uh, explore challenges and opportunities as it pertains to uh, supply chain digitalization in in the pharmaceutical industry Uh, and without further ado i would like to uh, to hand it over to arun who can uh, give his brief introduction on his background roles and responsibilities he has had uh, in his in his career over to you arun uh, hi saran uh, great to be here as you know i am a software developer turned uh, supply chain professional and my interests are in making supply chain smooth and predictable i remember vividly you know in one of my supply chain professors used to end every class uh, by banging the table and saying you know variability uh, is the enemy uh, and um, having worked at many distributors and manufacturers uh, both the big as well as small i have come to realize uh, how right uh, he is uh and supply chain uh, digitalization is one way of making the supply chain uh, smooth and uh, predictable and uh, let's talk about how we can do that yeah yeah i mean i i i totally um, echo your thoughts but but one quick question right i mean we hear this phrase of supply chain digitalization being thrown uh, around quite a few times uh what does it mean or can you define what supply chain digitalization means means to you yeah so i think actually this is actually very deep waters uh so let's take it uh <laughs> piecemeal right uh digitalization is just uh using computer automation for your processes so having your uh, processes being executed uh, by the computer so that automatically means that it is Uh, error free predictable and now supply chain uh, digitalization just means you know adding uh, these uh, process automation to your interactions with your uh, customer as well as interaction uh, with your uh, uh, with your suppliers yep. right so uh, having said all of that there is the ERP implementation has to be right for all of this to happen, right? Yeah. So, I will be, be a little bit prescriptive here and maybe a little bit detailed because I have seen uh, many uh, ERP implementations which has not gotten the uh, return on investment, which kind of uh, you know uh, throws cold water on the enthusiasm for uh, you know connectivity with. Uh, Uh, suppliers or connectivity with uh, with customers uh, because your own erp implementation has not brought you the return on investment that you need right yeah, yeah. so so this uh, erp implementation has to be done right uh, mm-hmm. which means that we need to build a layer of uh, master data correct yeah and, and then build processes on top of that yep now this is easier said than done but i think if you focus on just two things the path to the right kind of implementation of erp will be self guided uh, like for example uh, not example uh, the two things you need to focus on is uh, customers right will this help the customer mm-hmm. will, and then 
Uh, the second thing is your aspiration. What is it that you want to achieve by automating process? Mm -hmm. So like, for example, my thinking is about lights out manufacturing. Yeah. That means your processes are so much automated that you do not even need lights for your manufacturing process to happen, right? If that is your aspiration and you are customer focused, then your guide, uh, you'll be self-guided. At every fork in the intersection, you will make the right decision because you are having asking only two questions. Will this be helpful to my customer? And second is, will this help me towards uh, lights out manufacturing? Now, lights out manufacturing may be 50 years away, maybe 100 years away, maybe in, you know, never in my uh, lifetime kind of a thing or in any lifetime. But the thing is, if you aspire to that, you will get, uh, you will move in the right direction. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, you know, just like somebody said, right? Uh, if you reach for the stars, you land on the moon. Yeah. That yeah. way, you know, if you aspire towards lights out manufacturing uh, and think about the customers uh, every step of the way, you will be self-guided and your MRP implementation will give you the return on investment. Which then the next step about going to, you know, uh, connecting with the uh, suppliers and customers and having that process automated becomes a natural extension and there will be enthusiasm uh, in the organization for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this this makes makes a total sense. And I still remember uh, one of your uh, uh, statements that you always used to make that, hey, we should aim to get to a point where machines are doing what machines are meant to do and let humans do the job that humans are better at doing. Let's not uh, mix their roles and responsibilities, which kind of brings me to another uh, topic which we are hearing a lot these days, which is all about this AI and machine learning and trying to, uh, trying to have machines do a human job also. But I think one of the basic foundations of being able to do that is to have a good data foundation. And, and what I see in a lot of the, the organizations, even multi-billion dollar organizations, is that they are still exchanging critical supply chain information through spreadsheets and emails and PDFs. I mean, there is a big disconnect between what the aspiration is and what the, what the current reality is. Why do you think there is this gap? And, and what can we do to reduce uh, this, this gap? Yeah, as I had said earlier, right? Uh, if they have not gotten the return on investment on the their MRP uh, investment, then they will be less likely to, you know, have uh, electronic connectivity with uh, customers and uh, uh, suppliers. So uh, I think the first step is uh, to make sure that they have the right MRP system. And the second thing also is you know, showing the return on investment uh, to uh, to spur uh, investment into digital connectivity, mm. right? Uh, I remember, uh, as you might remember, Sarang, uh, you know, SAP does a great job in, uh, in you know, coming up with the ROI calculators and, uh, you know, talking to you and then coming up with numbers says, okay, you will be so much better off if you were to use our system because you will get this return on investment, right? So similarly, I think um, uh, we should be able to show the return on investments on uh, connectivity, digital connectivity uh, with uh, customers and suppliers. And I think that will uh, go uh, towards making the leap from emails and things like that to, uh, uh, to you know, being digitally connected. So I think the return on investment, I mean, Every businesses, I think we should assume that they are rational and any rational businesses would want a return on investment. They are not going to, uh, you know, spend money uh, when the returns are not uh, guaranteed or almost guaranteed, right? I mean, they want assurance that uh, this money is not going to be wasted. And especially if their MRP implementation has not gotten them a big return on investment, the job becomes even more difficult. I, I agree. I mean, this is something that I uh, uh, was uh, asked a lot of times in my previous organization also. They said, hey, what are you trying to achieve and why are you trying to achieve? Show me the ROI because you only have limited resources and time to implement 
a variety of project that we are trying to implement. So I am going. We are going to prioritize the one that gives us highest return on investment. So I think uh, you have hit the nail there that we need to be able to justify and come up with the right uh, return on investment calculations uh, before we initiate uh, 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 that project. So speaking of which, then how do you see that uh, this supply chain digitalization can help CMOs or CDMOs specifically? I mean. Every organization has their own reasons of uh, undertaking this and they have their own goals. So where do you see C CMOs or CDMOs uh, benefiting from uh, supply chain digitalization? Yeah, uh, especially uh, CMOs, right? I mean, one of the things you want to do for supply chain dis digitalization uh, is uh, to be more efficient, mm -hmm. right? So that uh, you can get, uh, you know, and especially with the uh, CMOs, your customer knows ev almost everything about your operation because many times they might own the process. Right. Many times they will also uh, dictate which uh, supplier you need to get raw materials from. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes even the prices of the raw materials that you get from these suppliers are fixed by the customer. So they know a whole lot about you. So then your uh, ability to uh, make a good uh, margin uh, gets uh, reduced because they know everything about you and they can always challenge you. Yeah. So uh, then you make your margin by being uh, very efficient. And you know digitalization is one way of being very efficient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other thing also about uh, this uh, digitalization is also if this uh, you know connectivity helps the customers because think about it right every customer wants to know when their stuff is going to be delivered right they want quality products at the right time and at the right price and if you are efficient then uh, you will be able to provide this and also they want the information on hey where is my product going to arrive and if it's not going to arrive on time they would like to be informed these kinds of interactions are help if we have uh, connectivity. Like for example, you know, PO sent automatically. As soon as the, there is a need for an item, a PO is sent out. And then, uh, you know, POA uh, acknowledgement, right? Which tells that, oh, this product is going to ship on this day. And then if it doesn't ship, another one saying that it's going to ship on this day. So that the customer knows at every point of time when they are going to get their product. So that is something which the customer wants. So if you can provide them what they want, make the customer stick, make the stickability uh, uh, higher, uh, and then you are also very efficient. Therefore, you are able to give them, uh, you know, the right the product at the right time uh, with the best uh, possible quality. Then you know both you and uh, the customer win. Yeah, yeah, and and this, I mean takes me back to the last project that we worked together was where is my stuff which customers always kept asking that i am not overly worried about the products that you have already delivered but for the ones which you have not tell me when is it going to arrive and keep me posted about any updates any delays that are happening so i think that's that's a very important uh, point but and one thing Sarg, i want to yeah. um, uh, interject here is that I've seen companies spend an inordinate amount of uh, time and effort giving them this information, right? You have to uh, create uh, these spreadsheets, get the information from various sources, and then send them. And then at multiple levels, they will ask for that information because yeah. uh, your performance is not good because you're not efficient. And therefore, everybody wants to, uh, uh, like, want to know, okay, when is my stuff going to be here? So you will get questions from the VP level uh, to the uh, you know buyer level because they all want to know, hey, when is my uh, where is my stuff, right? Yeah, so yeah. and that is going to make your uh, your organization much less efficient because we are running around trying to uh, scrape this information, put it in an Excel spreadsheet, and uh, send it across, and that's very time consuming. And then also it is likely to be uh you know not consistent so right so you know and then customer is going to trust you less and then again that then more questions will come in so it uh goes uh for 
you know, efficiency is going to go down if your interaction is in this manner. And I've seen this very, very often. Yeah, yeah. It's it's almost a vicious spiral which you almost can exactly. never get out of. But I mean, given that there are so many obvious benefits of doing digital uh, integration with, with customers, what are some of the factors that currently are inhibiting or are behaving as a roadblock for, for CMOs or uh, CDMOs from undertaking this journey? Is it is it the cost of implementation? Is it the speed of implementation? Is it scalability? What's really stopping them from uh, getting on this journey? I mean, it could be multiple factors, right? Mm -hmm. One is that they do not uh, yet see the return on investment. That is which we have already covered. The other thing is they may have, you know, uh, projects uh, which they are currently working on, which shows them a bigger return on investment. Right. So, you know, the typical way to judge projects is I have, I have all of these projects. Let me do the ones with the largest NPV. So mm -hmm. it's up to um, companies like Tracelink to show that, you know, there is a lot of NPV here uh, for them to say, okay, we will undertake uh, uh, this project. And the other thing that might be uh, uh, a roadblock or a hindrance or basically it's not on top of mind of people making the decisions is that maybe their margins are pretty good. Uh, remember when we went uh, the way of digitalization at uh, VWR, right? We were a distributor, a lot of competition, uh, you know, uh, margins were tight. So it, there used to be a lot of uh, incentive to be like really efficient. And then uh, because we had a lot of customers, right? The only way to be efficient with so such a large number of products, large number of customers, is by uh, going digital. And it is very much possible that these uh, things do not apply or are not not on top of mind for the executives to make that decision. Right, right. So I think it it all goes back to uh, reinforcing the the return on investment that yep. there is a value uh, that you can. I mean, there is a significant value that you can realize. Bye bye, undertaking this uh, journey.